contenders, pretenders, chicken tenders, go on tender. What are these Baltimore Ravens? You know, I had to throw a little dad joke in there. Anyway, first question came from my guy, Jay Fire. He said, yo, what's up, Engraving? It's your boy, Jay Fire, again. Glad to have you back stateside and hope that vacation was amazing. Yes, it, it, it was great. I appreciate you, though. Uh, he said, Emmanuel Acho said on his show recently that he does not see Ravens as contenders because the people they beat were weak. And when they played strong teams, they lost. What you think about that? Are the Ravens contenders this year in your eyes? Ooh, ooh. Um, that is a great question, a great way uh, to start us off on this episode. So, um, the Ravens, uh, they lost to the Bills. Uh, a lot of people see them as contenders. They lost to the Dolphins. They are seeming to emerge themselves as contenders. Uh, and they also lost to the Giants. And Giants are on a roll right now looking like looking like they could be contenders as well. I, I'm like, I'm not fully sold on it. Hey, but they're winning. They're winning, so... You can't say nothing about that, but I'm not fully sold on the Giants right now. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, but anyway, um, the Ravens, they are they contenders? They can be. They they certainly can be. Um, and, and it's all just going to depend on what they do in the playoffs. Like, I, I don't think any Ravens fan, and, and again, not in a cocky way, but I don't think any Ravens fan is extra concerned about the rest of the regular season. Uh, Ravens seem to be finding their identity um, and, and really rolling with it. Their defense just got that much stronger. Um, and, and they're going to be getting some, some more players back healthy as the season goes along. Um, so I don't think regular season is going to be an issue for the Ravens. Uh, even if they lose another game, if they lose another two games, I think that they'll win out for the most part. But playoffs. Playoffs is my biggest concern. Um, they... They had an issue with closing against those really good teams. Now, um, but playoffs are really going to test it. Playoffs are really going to test whether the Ravens' closing issues are completely fixed. Like, completely fixed. And, and I mean, hopefully the Ravens do get in a position um, to show us that, hey, we can close it out. Because, again, like it's, it's been brought up, every single game, Ravens have built up double-digit leads against every single opponent. Good opponents, bad opponents, and everybody in between. They've done that. So the fact that they can do that, it's like, hey, okay, hey, we can rock with these guys. But playoffs is the biggest concern. That's where, that, that's what everybody's like waiting on right now for the Ravens in my eyes. I think that's what everybody, like regular season, just like, all right, hey, we'll try this out, we'll try that out. We'll get by, okay, cool. Because Ravens have been here before. Ravens have been in this position before where the regular season, they had some little shaky moments or whatnot, but then it's like, oh, okay, whoa, oh, they're they looking a lot better. And then playoffs, they, they end up falling flat. So if they are truly contenders, which I think they can be, but they, they certainly going to get tested because in, come playoffs, that's where everybody, they try to take away what you do the best. They try to take away what you do best. Ravens, they right now, they, well, the way that they built it, philosophy and all that just run game run game run game uh efficiency with the passing game not volume but they they bank on efficiency uh and then great defense so teams are really on offense they're gonna try to take away that run game so my concern is all right i just don't want to see ravens put in the same position that they've been put in year after year after year where it's like all right teams sell out they stop the run game the passing game is looking like oh what do we do now who steps up? Who shows out? Because Hollywood ain't there no more. <laughs> you know, Hollywood come play off time. Hey, Hollywood was good for it, man. Come play. Like that, that, that boy, just he don't know nothing but showing out in the playoffs. But he's gone. So, I'm just, that's, that's my fear. And Mark Andrews in the playoffs, he's been really quiet. He's been really, like, really, really quiet. And it's like, oof, okay. Mark Andrews doesn't have a, a great track record in the playoffs. Hollywood is gone. Rashad Bateman's out for the season. And, I mean, he never played in the playoffs anyway, but what's it, what's it going to be? That's my big thing moving forward. What's it going to be when teams are like, all right, Ravens, y'all ain't running on us. Y'all ain't running on us. What's it going to be? So um, it's funny because I was having a conversation uh, with my guy, Kevin. 
Kevin Ray, shout out to him by the way. Shout out to you and your family too. Your wife, your kids, they they super cool, super cool family. I love them. Um, and we were talking, and we were talking about the offense. And I was saying, like, man, with with the the way that the Ravens they run things, like with the passing game, it it like has to be perfect. There is so there's like no room for error with the Ravens passing game because the volume is super low. Um, and I told him, like, that worries me. But he was like, hey, but as far as Ravens defense, he said team, the, op opposing teams, their offense, it, it, it has little room for error because the Ravens, their defense is so strong. Oh, well, that, that is a good point. That's a very good point. So, so Ravens, like, they, they strengthened what was their strength as far as, again, adding Roquan Smith. And, hey, could Marcus Williams be back for the Panthers game? Uh, I wouldn't count. Oh, they did. They said December anyway, so no. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just it's just interesting to think about. So I, I think they can be contenders. They can, but throughout the rest of the regular, we won't find out. I don't think we'll really find out um, for the rest of the regular season because they play. They play a lot of bad teams. And, of course, like with the records, they don't show, like, the context of the games that a lot of these teams played in. And these teams, a lot of times, like, stuff just doesn't go their way. It, stuff, like, it could be a, a tipped interception. It could be a drop pass. It could be a bad call. It could be this, that, and a third. But, hey, these teams, they, they lost a lot more games than they won. But come playoff time, you have to be ready to adjust. You have to be on point. And this Ravens team, like, defense I ain't worried about. I ain't worried about the Ravens defense in the playoffs. I mean, we've seen that their defense in the playoffs. They usually uh, show up they, for the most part. But it's the offense. That's, that's my concern. How is this offense going to be? What's going to be plan B if teams take away plan A? How are they going to react to those pressure situations? Who's going to be that clutch person for them that really shows up uh, on offense? And it got to be Lamar, too. But it can't just be Lamar. Who else is it going to be, too? Now, Lamar, Lamar, again, he is not faultless from things that are happening this season. He's not faultless. Of course, I know he's missed some throws for sure. He's missed some throws. There have been some times, like remember the Bills game, where he's thrown it a little bit late. Twice in that game, actually, both times got picked off by what was it, Jordan Poy? I think. But either way, um, he and he's certainly missed. He's missed some layup throws too, so he got to tighten up. But then again, that's that's what scares me about the offense moving forward because it's like, all right, if if Lamar misses a throw, Ravens the the volume is so low. So, again, those throws are emphasized, just like with people's drops, with receivers' drops on this team. Everything gets emphasized that much more because the volume is so low. What's going to happen with the, when the volume only gets pushed up come playoff time? Because I, really, I don't expect them to be like, all right, hey, guys, let's, let's really start airing it out now for the rest of the regular season. I don't expect them to do that. Or I, don't, I, don't even, I don't think anybody should expect them to do that. I don't expect them to change their identity and be like, all right, we're going to go pass heavy, da 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 but No. But um, I, I just, again, my, I'm, I'm just wondering how is it going to be come playoff time? That's, that's my biggest thing. So, all, again, to, just to go back to the original question, because I know we, we went on a tangent. We could talk about this all day. But um, do I think the Ravens are contenders or pretenders? I, I would put them a little more on the side of contenders. But um, we, it's one of those things where we really won't know till we know. But... Something that goes in their favor um, is the fact that now me, I'm not one of them people that's like, oh, well, hey, I'm, I'm glad that they lost. Kind of so, so like it's, it's funny with, with some fans. Um, they'll be like, like if the Ravens would be undefeated right now, there'd be a lot of fans that'd be very happy. I'd be very happy. Um, but with the Ravens losses, there's some, some fans that'd be like, oh, well, the Ravens, they needed those losses. They needed those losses. And me, I'm like, ah, I don't really feel like you need a loss. I know, I know what you're saying. Or like, okay, it better to lose in a regular season than the playoffs, obviously. But I feel like even in wins, you should still be looking for things to correct. It shouldn't take a loss for you to be like, all right, we need to correct this, that, and a third. Um, but uh, yeah, man, we'll, we'll we'll just see how this thing plays out. But in those losses, 
uh, you can look back and look at little things that the Ravens could fix and should fix. Where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, oh, all right, yeah, they, 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 they can make that happen. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, they, they, they can fix that. Um, it's little things here and there. Uh, but they certainly, like, they were tested early on. They were tested early on this season, like, literally from jump, from the beginning of the season, they, they got tested early on. Uh, but, and, and of course, like, just because these teams got bad records that the Ravens are going to be going up against, it don't mean that the Ravens won't have their struggles and they won't have their issues and they won't have things that are times where they, they just may not look as good. It's going to happen. Well, hopefully it doesn't happen, but it's most likely going to happen sometimes. Um, but yeah, playoffs, man. Playoffs is a different animal. Um, and that has been an animal that the Ravens just, they have not been able to tame for the most part thus far. So the regular season is cool, but playoffs, that will really answer the question um, on if the Ravens are really uh, for real. But for now, like, they seem like they can be. But again, it's Regular season is regular season. We know, we, we know, like, going into the season, we said it so many times. We said it so many times that, hey, if Lamar Jackson's healthy, the majority of the team healthy and whatnot, Ravens will get into the playoffs. They'll get there. Regular season has, for years, regular season has not been an issue. That's not what anybody should be worried about. But playoffs, man, playoffs. So mm, that's when we'll really be able to uh, answer the question But I, I would say it, it, Based off of this regular season though Thus far um, I would put them in the contender category Again simply because of the double digit lead part Simply because of that part And um, That like again Against the Bills they did it Against the Dolphins they did it Against the Giants they did it Like all these teams Like these are Dolph Against Dolphins 7-3 and three, Giants I think 7-2 and two. Bills six and three, like these are teams with good records, and, and Ravens were up on them. Ravens had opportunities, but I know the Dolphins game. I think they only scored like three points in the second half. The Bills game, I think they only scored three points in the second half. The Giants game, the the turnovers just got ugly. But this Ravens team now, like if they were playing the football that they're playing right now against those teams, especially with the added Roquan Smith, those. Games could be flipped. They could be flipped. Um, and especially if uh, Gus Edwards was a big difference too. He was a big difference maker. He didn't play in not one of those games. Gus Edwards did not play in not one of those games. So Ronnie Stanley, he didn't play in the Dolphins game. He... Didn't play in the Bills game. No, he didn't play in the Bills game. Did he play in the Giants game? I don't think he did, but I don't remember if he played in that one or not. Or if he that if that's when his snap count started. I, I don't remember. But um You know what? I don't think he did. But I but I don't remember. Don't 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 quote me on that, because y'all know I got a bad memory. But Gus Edwards and Ronnie Stanley, big impact makers, man. Big impact makers. They have made such a big difference. Uh, for these Baltimore Ravens. Um, so with those two back alone, the offense has just changed a lot. A whole lot. Um, and yeah, man. So now it's just about stacking, building wins, building consistency, uh, and just keeping this thing rolling, man. If Ravens can do that, um, then they can certainly uh, be contenders in this league. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Wow, who knew we could spend like 13, 14 minutes on one question? I did, because y'all know I'd be running my mouth. Anyway, next question came from my guy, Nazarene. And appreciate you being a patron, Nazarene. He said, what's up, big bro? Hope all is well. E everything is great, my man. He said, I'm watching your video about Roquan Smith being like Ray Lewis. Now, um, no. 
Roquan is nowhere near Ray Lewis. The only thing he could probably surpass Ray in is the most tackles by a middle linebacker in the first five years. Other than that, Ray Lewis is literally just better. Roquan is more like Bobby Wagner, which is, is, is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. But anyway, back to this question. He said, Ray was a better pass rusher, better tackler, better run stuffer, a better pass cover. And guess what? Ray Lewis' weakness was literally pass rushing. His pass rushing is pretty high for an inside linebacker. Man, I think people should get a PFF account. It's amazing information on there. Hey, everybody, everybody don't want to pay for that, man. Everybody don't. And PFF is so weird, man. This is why I think it's so important to actually... Like for people to look with their own eyes at uh like to see what they see, cause if you like, I think last in the Saints game for example, I think um Justin Houston had like this super low grade on PFF, but he balled. If you watch the game, you like this dude was balling. He got what two and a half sacks, got the pick, and and he had a low grade, and it was like what? So PFF they they can be very funny sometimes, but anyway, uh he said they still have some of the greatest to. They still have some of the greatest to ever play ratings on there. Ray is basically the perfect linebacker. Like I said in the previous message, Ray is the Peyton Manning of defense. Straight captain, straight animal, and was feared like Lawrence Taylor, Reggie, White, Ronnie Lott, Ed Reed, etc. He is the middle linebacker. God, no cap. Roquan is definitely, oh, definitely perfect for the pieces we have on defense, but... He's no Ray Lewis. He's a younger Bobby Wagner. That's all I got to say. <laughs> enjoy your weekend. Hey, you enjoy yours too. Even though the weekend is already passed when I'm making this video. And the last question on this episode came from my guy DJ Gloves. He said, Team Keep It Clean. Hey, fam. Uh, I'm a new follower uh, who is a special education teacher. Hey, I, I appreciate uh, you doing that. I, I appreciate the fact that you teach uh, special education because, and, and I told you this before, that's something that's going to stick with them forever uh, in a positive way. You, you, and, and I mean, this is just teachers in general, really, too. Um, but certainly for, for special education teachers, that's, that's, that's special right there. Um, so you, we, we appreciate you doing that, man. Um, he said, I, I love the videos and perspectives. You are almost always positive, And when you have a negative comment, it's always fair. Now, don't, don't, get, uh, don't get disagreeing. With something that the Ravens are doing or whatever we're talking about mixed with negativity. Because it's a big difference. But anyway, um, he said, uh, keep making great videos. Uh, yeah, they, they okay. But I appreciate it. My 22 and 14-year-old sons, they love the videos. Hey, I tell them I said I appreciate it. Shout out to both of them. Um, I got two questions. This looks like the easiest schedule we have had in a long time. What do you think our chances are that we can make the number one seeds and have the AFC Championship games go through Baltimore? I know Kansas City and Buffalo are the favorites, but I don't think they will have the easy schedule that we do. This, hey, right, yeah, we were talking about it earlier. The Ravens got a big opportunity here that they could take advantage of, a huge opportunity. Um, and if you can come away with home field advantage, if you obviously, first and foremost, you got to try to win a division. Then, of course, you got to try to, um, yeah, get that number one seed. If you can get it, hey, great. Um, I know there's some people that's like, no, we don't want no number one seed. We don't, we don't want it because we remember Ravens last time they had number one seed. Don't worry about last time. I know 20, 20, let, let 2019 go. Let it go. Let it go. And I know they, they look back at uh, 2012 too and be like, oh, Ravens didn't have number one seed back. Let it go. They get number one seed, great. If they don't, okay, cool, whatever. But number one seed will be great course especially if you like hey these referees they be changing stuff man so especially if you get a little home cooking or what nah, i know you ain't gonna play but anyway uh they yeah they got a big opportunity man because their schedule is uh, yeah they literally got the easiest schedule for the rest of the year so they they, they sitting pretty right now so hopefully they they, they bank on that Oh, get it, MNT bank on. Anyway, he said, my next question is more of a statement. I like Greg Roman, but I feel like he listens to the media too much and gets in his own head. When we play Ravens football, we win. When he tries to get cute, we end up losing like with Miami and the Giants. Lamar is Lamar. He isn't Brady, which is fine with me. I love Lamar for being himself. I think he can throw the ball, and I never doubt that. But I want to know if you agree or not. Does Greg Roman get in his own head, and why do you think he does that? It's not always when we are down either. In Tampa, he tried to get cute in the first half, and we took the game over when we finally started playing Ravens football. Our line is built to run the ball. I'm not saying they can't pass block, but even Stanley was one of the best run blockers in his draft. We have an athletic O-line built to run. 
What's your thoughts? Also, thanks again for answering. Hope you're doing great and keep making videos. Uh, give the city something to come together for. Thanks for all you do. Hey, appreciate you. Be more buried 52. Much love, man. Um, with Greg Roman, he's, uh, I mean, he's, he's Greg Roman. He, uh, again, not a bad offensive coordinator, but yeah, sometimes it, sometimes he can sort of overcomplicate things. Um, and, uh, I mean, the, the way I feel about Greg Roman, I, I feel like he is great for um, a young quarterback, maybe even a rookie quarterback, their first, like, couple of years in the league. But I feel like that, that quarterback will be capped as far as what they do, their growth. I, I feel like um, after those first couple of years, and it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's really t it's, it's time to move on. It's, it's time to expand. It's time to grow. And I, I just feel like we haven't seen that um, with this offense. So I feel like we haven't seen it as much as we should have uh, with Lamar. Um, so, yeah, I, but as far as Greg Roman getting in his own head, does he listen to the media? I know the Ravens, they listen to the media. So, hey, it could be Greg Roman. That stuff could trickle down to him, obviously, with him, with him being an offensive coordinator. We know John Harbaugh listens to the media he, we, because he's, he's made several comments over the years letting us know that he listens to the media. Lamar, he hears, he hears all that stuff, too. A lot of Ravens players, they hear. I mean, they, they on social media, so they see what's going on. They watch the TV. Marlon Humphrey brought it up how they, they'll be uh, at, at practice and stuff and after practice, and they'll be having ESPN and whatever on, and they'll hear themselves being talked about and whatnot. So they see everything. They, 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 they see everything. I mean, in fact, Ronnie Stanley tonight, I had tweeted that Ravens need to change from the Seven Nation Army song because everybody in like every stadium sings that song. Everybody, everybody everywhere. Oh, 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 oh. And, and it's, it's lovely. You know, that that was Ravens thing for a long time. But I feel like they need to change it because everybody's doing it. So it's not the same that it used to be. Um, and, and Ronnie Stanley, he had liked that tweet. I was like, oh, OK, I see you, Ronnie. But anyway, anyway, um. With Greg Roman, yeah, if if he's listening to the the media, what not, listening to people talk, okay, whatever, you're gonna hear what they say, but it's up to you to actually uh to to feed off of it. You can still do your own thing, and I mean this this offense, they are built to play to Greg Roman's strengths as a coordinator. That it's built for him, and it's built for Ravens uh, philosophy. Um, so he he just really doesn't have an excuse for anything because it's, it's for him. It's, it's literally for him. It's, it's literally gift wrapped with a big picture of Greg Roman on there smiling. Greg, this is your gift. This is for you. So, yeah, man. I, I um Sometimes Ravens, they, they can overthink some stuff. Um, but, it again, it seems like it se we'll see. It's all about consistency. Because, again, my, my thing, like with Devin DuVernay, one game he'll be hot. He'll be getting the ball. He'll be getting all these carries. He'll be getting these catches and whatnot. Then the next game it's like, oh, silence, nothing. You don't hear nothing from him. It's like, well, hey, what's, what's, what's going on? What's, what's, what's up with Devin doing it? What happened? And there'll be a lot of inconsistent. And it's like, man, he, he's a playmaker. When the ball in his hands, good stuff happens. Um, it'll happen with the run game. The run game will be working, and then they'll come out, like, pass heavy and stuff. They'll be up, and they'll be passing heavy. Like, the game the game will be, Ravens will be, like, two scores up. They'll still be running Lamar and what, and it's like, oh, what, what are you doing? So I, I just, I don't know. And that could be some of Lamar's decision, too. Well, Cause you know he be deciding sometimes like, hey, look, I'm I'm just about to take off, man. I, I'm gonna put the game in my hand. I ain't giving it to Drake. I ain't giving it to Gus. I ain't giving it to J.K. I ain't giving it to Justice. I ain't giving it to Micah. Well, even though Mike don't get no hands off handoffs anyway. But anyway, Lamar could be like, look, I ain't giving it to nobody. I'm taking it over myself. But um, yeah, man, they just uh just gotta really just not even necessarily simplify stuff, but sometimes you just gotta you, you gotta get out your own head. Um, and you just. You really just gotta settle down. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.